good question. <laughs> no idea. It says we're live now. Never heard of it. Hi. Hey. Hi. Welcome back to Cartoon Universe. I'm Deep Cut. I'm joined today by Haley and the cast of the Netflix animated series Arcane. We have J.B. Blanc, who played Vander, Jason Spisak as the voice of Silco, Tox Olugondoye as Mel, Mick Wingert as Heimerdinger, Mia Sinclair Janess as Powder, and Josh Keaton, who played several characters, including Deckard, Salo, and the Gorgeous Man, as he is called. Uh, we're going to go one at a time to each of you, give you a chance to introduce yourself in your own words and tell us about uh, how you got involved with Arcane and what other projects we might know you from. Why don't we start with Jason Spisak? God, why would you do that? Oh, you... <laughs> we can circle back to you if you want. No, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. Uh, we'll just take been... up the rest of the session. Yes. Yeah, you're in trouble. <laughs> I, I've, right. I've been voice acting for I don't know, 26 years and been in a lot of animated shows and made my way to Arcane uh, just through the normal audition process. And I've been friends with several people on this call, at least JB and Josh for many, many years. And I've been an admirer of a lot of the people's work on the show. So to be honest, I was a, a fan watching as much as uh, an actor watching. So Arcane is a singularly beautiful piece of art and I'm lucky to be a part of it. Wow, well said. Let's move over to Josh Keaton. Um, like, uh, like Jason, I've been a voice actor for many years, uh, also on camera, which I'm, I'm sure Jason does as well. I've, I've seen some of his, uh, stuff that he's, he sent me from like, uh, I forget the project you were working on. It was like a space themed project. It looked really, really space cool. Space themed? You mean or, no, uh, Yes. The, the, with yeah. the, the, the time the, portal. The time portal. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I've been an actor for many years. Um, and, um, you might know me from, uh, the spectacular Spider-Man. I was Spider-Man in that. I worked with Jason in Green Lantern, the animated series where I was Hal Jordan and he was, uh, Razor, the bad boy. Um, and, uh, I was Hercules and, uh, and young Hercules and Shiro and Voltron. And now I'm, uh, in, in Arcane as a bunch of things. And, uh, like Jason came to it through the normal audition process and, uh, am super happy to, to have, uh, to, to be a part of it. I mean, the, the show has, has exceeded my wildest expectations. It's, it's beautiful. The story is beautiful. It's visually just breathtaking and uh, I couldn't be happier with it. Well, thank you for being a part of it. Let's move on to Tox Olugundoye. Hi, yes, I'm Tox Olugundoye and I play now. And I, yeah, I did, I, I got a, I got some sides, I auditioned for it, immediately forgot about it, as I do with all my other auditions, um, was offered a job. I knew nothing about League of Legends, so I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. I like paying my bills, so I said <laughs> yes. And um, yeah, um, about I realized it was going to probably be a big deal when I went to see the pilot at the campus and I heard JB's voice and I was like, oh, okay <laughs> because i'm actually a huge fan of jb's um so yeah that's how i got into it thank you so much and let's move over to mia sinclair janice hi so as you know uh, i hope i'm mia sinclair janice i play powder um like everyone else i got into it um from the normal audition process i'd known about leagues for uh, i'd known about league for a while um you know, I'm a kid and I have a lot of friends who are gamers and streamers and kind of in that realm. So I was thrilled to get the audition. I was 10 at the time. Um, and I think I probably knew it was going to be a big deal from the start just because I'd known about the fan base. But, um, you know, it, it did exceed every single expectation. I mean, everything about it, the animation, the score, and of course, the absolutely wonderful cast that I have been lucky enough to create this um, beautiful show with have been absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Let's move over to Mick. Can you all hear me? I got booted for yeah. a second. Okay. I good. Can hear you. Uh, uh, you know, this is a great thing about this particular show is that uh, in, in a day and age when there's so, there's so much stuff being, being cast these days, just, just by trying to, you know, leverage all kinds of media outlets and, and influence and that kind of thing with audiences that David Lyerly and his team brought us in on auditions and sent us sides to, to, to show their commitment just to getting like the best people for each role. And um, that's how I got involved, just like everybody else. Like there was an audition sent to me and I looked up the character and 
they, you know, they were very clear. They didn't necessarily want a voice match for from the game, but they, uh, they definitely wanted it to feel like the same person. And so I, I just did my thing and then went through that process. Uh, you might know me from, you know, like most of the cast here, I've done uh, voice acting for several years now and uh, kind of came to the dance with my Jack Black impression, you know, to do like Kung Fu Panda, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also am uh, Iron Man in What If, uh, sometimes opposite uh, Josh Keaton as skinny Steve Rogers, uh, which is kind of fun. And um, done a lot of different like uh, junior shows and stuff. I'm on Sophia the First and Elena of Avalor a lot. And hey, you know, I'm on Disney Junior too. Excellent. That we have yeah. that in common. We sure um, do. And I've just been excited and stoked to be a part of Arcane. It's so cool, uh, and the lore and the writing is so deep uh, on this project. It's super cool. And finally, let's move over to JB Blanc. Hey, hey. My name's JB. I play Vanda. Uh, been an actor for 30 years on camera and off. Uh, I'm, uh, I do a game called Apex Legends. I play Caustic and uh, a guy called Cuban Blisk. I'm Kano and MK11. I've uh, done Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Horizon Zero Dawn, um, Arkham Origins. I was Bane. Do a lot of video game stuff and animation. I've worked with Mick on various pandas and uh, done shows like All Hail King Julian. And I think I've worked with everyone on here apart from Mia before Arcane. But it's possible we have done bits on the show together as well. Um, I I had a relationship with League because I play a character called Brahm in League of Legends, who's a wonderful kind of another character with a big heart. I don't know why they cast me as those because I literally have no heart. <laughs> and uh, you're a cold bastard. I'm a cold, <laughs> untrue, cold man, untrue, cold man. untrue. Um, I seem to be doing a nice line in 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 uh, loving dads who don't seem to last very long. <laughs> So, uh, but the nice thing is, I, 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 I'm not bitter about being killed off in everything I do. So. <laughs> um, I, was, uh, I think I was just Sorry. asked because of because of because of league and Vanda just fit. It was just a good fit, mm -hmm. so we were all very happy about that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to defer to Haley on the next question, and she'll choose which order people uh, can answer in. But before we do that, I just want to remind everyone watching that you can get a signed print from any of these voice actors in the link down below, the Streamly link. I personally purchased one of Vander because he was my favorite character. Uh, over to you, Haley. You can come again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So our next question is, what has been your favorite part of working on the project? Uh, Let's start with Mia. Um, I mean, there have been so many favorite parts. The entire experience has been so beyond anything. Um, but I think if I had to choose one favorite part, it would be the fan base. I mean, before we went live, I was talking about how on TikTok, you know, I will spend hours and hours going through these cosplayers' accounts and just how dedicated and loyal the fan base is that's been really really special to be a part of mm -hmm. we love you guys <laughs> cool um next up uh jason yes you want to know what my favorite part of this is well i'll tell you what yes. <laughs> <laughs> i have enjoyed the fans i i mean it, it seems silly to say but you know, if, if we just are in a room making our voices, you know, into a microphone and the animators animated and then it, it comes out and it's nothing without the audience. We do this for the people. I mean, we do it for a paycheck, as Tokes has, has said, but I think one of the best things we get in return is knowing that there are people out there whose lives it impacts, whose relationships it affects in a positive way, whose you, lives pivot on a piece of art that we helped create. And that to me is the greatest part of the experience. Awesome. Yeah, we'll talk more about uh, fans and stuff later. We have a lot of questions <laughs> a, about that. A, a, paycheck, yeah. a paycheck doesn't hurt. I, I, yeah. just, just, to be, just to be fair. Yeah. I'll take one. I'll take one. I want to go to college. The fans, the, the, but the it. fans <laughs> have been just ridiculous ridiculously supportive and they pour their hearts into things like cosplay and fan art and I'm just constantly amazed and aghast at their talents and their dedication so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. okay so next up uh Mick oh gosh I mean 
I don't want to buck the trend here. I think definitely <laughs> I, I'm getting in touch with a, with a, with a fan base who love these characters uh, that I have, I have never, you know, had contact with before and it's super fun and it's super fun to see uh, how meaningful this universe is. And I think if I'm going to add anything to that answer, what I would say is like the, the other part that's really been part of my favorite is telling the stories of these people in th these characters that we get to play. Like every one of the characters in this world is, you know, is complex and has real stuff going on in their lives. And it, and the, and it's reflected in the way that they carry themselves. I'm, I'm astounded that I got, that I got to be a part of this incredible cast. I mean, I, I enjoy watching the show because I just am overwhelmed by how great everyone's performances are of these really very real complex human beings and, whose stories get to be told. Uh, and that's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, next, if we could go to Tokes. Um, yeah, <clears throat> obviously I love the fans. But um, it w would not be true if I didn't say that my favorite part was actually doing the thing. Um, a lot of times with voiceover, you sort of have like half an hour, an hour, you go and you do it, you leave. And it's fun, but they blocked out really large chunks of time for this. And they really took care to send scripts and tell you what was going on and talk you into it before you started and really describe the world and where other characters were so that you really knew where you were and it felt a little bit more um of a participatory thing with everybody in it instead of just okay i'm here i'm doing the thing and then i'm leaving um and i felt a, a lot a lot of freedom with with it because i knew exactly where i was sometimes i don't really know where i am when it comes to voiceover when i'm doing it and then i'll watch the project afterwards and be like oh goodness if i'd known that i would have done it a little bit differently but this was the first time that i really really you know felt the freedom to explore because i really felt safe i i really felt like i knew where i was and that actually somehow has impacted the rest of my work since since then mm. um it was a really cool experience for me working with these guys on this mm -hmm. oh that's so sweet yeah thank you uh and the next jb i think for me it was the bar at the premiere um they really went <laughs> they went overboard and there were special cocktails some named after me and i thought that was a nice touch <laughs> Um, I actually asked but, for that one. <laughs> the, uh, you know, it's obviously the, the fan response is, is unbelievable, but it's, I work on a lot of projects and I direct a lot of projects. And I think, you know, I always regard those, I direct all the Blizzard stuff and I direct Fortnite and some, 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 some of League of Legends too. I always regard it as a collaboration. And there, but as an actor, there are very few projects that come up where you really do feel that it's an, a collaboration where, the producers are as keen on your input and your ownership of the character mm -hmm. as much as uh, as they were on this. And I, I, one of the highlights, I mean, I know a lot of the cast already, just because I just by virtue of having been around so damn long. Um, <laughs> but but one of the highlights was was meeting these two incredible souls who came up with this this material, Christian and, and Alex, and one hundred percent, and and the yep. way that they just was so emotionally invested in this material that you couldn't help but be brought into it. And 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 I started, you know, I started recording on this six years ago. Yeah. You know, I was eleven. I was only a year older than Haley. <laughs> <laughs> than, 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 my, than Mia. And well probably Haley too, but Mia. <laughs> Life's been hard on you, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I can tell you that, you know, Vanda you was know Vanda was no joke. You know, I lost like, mm. my hair. <laughs> oh no. I know it's dreadful. Um, but but it was six years ago, and so watching the building blocks of this thing come together has been a kind of ma a, a, a very rare magical process. And even then, kind of seeing that process, watching the final product just, quite frankly, blew my mind. I think it blew all of our minds. And I, even having seen the, pr the, the the first pilot, which kind of changed a lot, this still kind of it just had such a huge impact on me. And and it's very rare that you get to work on something like that. So so I think this is a really 
a very special thing to be a part of. Um, except for working with Jason, but you can't have everything. <laughs> you know, you're not alone, JB. The, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> we go back a bit, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Something going on there. Uncharted Golden Abyss. That was a long <laughs> oh my time God, yeah. ago. Yes, a long forgotten beat yeah. game. No hardware exists that runs that game anymore. That's how long I've known That's you. A, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how dedicated we've been. What? We must stop meeting like this, Senor Drake. Drake, you're a loser. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Okay, and finally, Josh. How do I follow up all of that? I mean, <laughs> everybody said such great things already. By um, being eight times as handsome as me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. stop. As any of us, oh. I think. Yeah. I mean, I was typecast as gorgeous, man, but stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I'd say, too. <laughs> I would say that um, seeing seeing the process, like JB was saying, um, I was I was also I started on this about six years ago and um, you know they they actually recast a bunch of roles and and kind of rebooted the show halfway through and and JB and I went to a, a premiere for the the first episode and then after that they completely scrapped it and started from scratch and um, it was. It, they you could really tell that that they they had a vision and it wasn't going to be out until it was perfect and and even then like it it uh it, it just evolved in leaps and bounds from there and and I, i'd say the thing that that was just the most enjoyable for me uh, aside from getting to to meet uh actors that i hadn't worked with before and and see friends that i have worked with before was just getting to play characters that are a bit out of pocket from what i've usually done um, it, it's always really fun to be able to kind of stretch and grow as an actor and, uh, and, and play things that aren't really, uh, what you typically get cast for. So, uh, I, I definitely had the opportunity to do that in, uh, in Arcane and, um, and, and it's just been a wonderful thing to be a part of. I loved you as Ugly Man and in Into the Spider-Verse. Thought- <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is the role I was born to play. Just so good. Yeah. You have a face for radio, Josh. Yes. Yeah. I've been told this. <sighs> So we got another question for all of you, but real quick, we got a super chat from Anthula Modilos with a question for Jason. Uh, Powder's character goes on to hear the voices of people she believes to be dead in her head. And Anthula asked, uh, do you think Silco will be a kind voice in Jinx's head or perhaps uh, an angry or or crazy inciting one? Well, I can't speak for what the writers would imagine because they're far more talented than I at storytelling. Um, but the way that I view Silco's journey as a, a father figure or someone in Jinx's life is definitely Silco's not the same person at the end of the series as he is when he first starts out, you know, trying to have more powder in his life. So I, I would say it, it depends on what time she's remembering, because I imagine that Silco is very, you know, he went from being a murderer to being a guy who was happy to die to let Jinx take the stage. and you know, grateful for having time with her. So uh, the answer is it depends. I'd like to think that he's a comforting voice, someone who's there to soothe her if she has a nightmare, but not my choice. Well, thank you so much for the answer anyways. Uh, sure. So this next question is for everyone. What has been your favorite episode or scene in particular to work on and why? And I would like to start with folks. Uh, mm, <clears throat> no. Come on, get <laughs> down and dirty. Get down I, know, and dirty. I, I, I honestly, I, I don't think I can pick. This is like, I mean, this is Sophie's choice. I, um, I, oh. <laughs> if you want a minute to think about it, we can circle back to you. Oh, if you, you, know what? If you just really... freeze, then it looks like your camera's broke. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, Simply by virtue of the fact that I got to work in the room with her, I really liked my scenes with Alaria because we had a lot of fun and being able to watch them um, because we don't get to work with each other. You know, like it, that's one of the saddest things about voiceover is a lot of times you don't get to work with people. Um, uh, so I, I'll, I'll, because it's very difficult for me to choose, I'll say that. I know that's a cop out, but that's what I'm going to say. All right. Awesome. Let's move over to J.B. Blanc with his answer. The close stuff with with Vi was really good. That those sort of fatherly pep talks, I just loved that. I love that feeling. You know, my kid was going through some stuff at the time, and and uh, mm. but I, we were in a very difficult place with her, and 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 it was it was not fun to draw on stuff like that. But 
but that's where the kind of work happens i think it, it's often it's not at the time you don't think it's the it's terribly fun to be working on stuff like that and then when you look back you're like of course it worked because i was in a lot of pain and um and and so in hindsight it's the it's the difficult stuff that becomes because that's often the most challenging and if your life is all sunny and lovely it's it's often quite challenging to bring tragedy to things um so live tragically is what i'm saying kids uh have a really rough time out there and you'll be a better performer for it it works for me <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just saying i just, I, just think, you know, I think i think what i'm trying to say is at the time that it can be the stuff that's difficult that you find hard and, the, and it's difficult emotionally and then looking back, you go, damn, that was a good day. That was a really good day because we got to really achieve something special and unique and, and you know, that hopefully people will, will be touched by. It. So, yeah, it's weird. It's a weird thing. Well, hope for you. pain, Let's... people. Hope for pain. Hope for pain. New tagline. Let's move over to uh, Mia Sinclair. Um, I feel like we all know what I'm going to say. I feel like we all know that I'm going to talk about episode three. Because you blew um, our minds. Well, blew you. our minds. I can't watch it without crying, man. Yeah. I couldn't do the session without but with crying. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so we it have was... a question coming up about that scene in particular. Okay. We have cool. a specific so if you want to pick a different one just for the sake of diversity okay. and answers. Because we're gonna ask okay. a lot about that one. Um I oh my goodness. Okay. I think maybe the first scene that I recorded ever, um, where we're looking over Piltover and, you know, I'm with Vi and I'm with Milo and everyone. And I think something that I love so much about Powder is that I've gotten to grow up with her, you know? Like, I've gotten to grow and change as a person while I've been recording this, you know, incredible series. And I am forever grateful and forever irrevocably changed. Um, and I just think about that first day when I was recording and how much I didn't know and how much I had yet to learn, not only in my work life, but also in my real life. You know, I listen back on that first episode and I, every single time I hear my first line, I, I'm like, oh my God, I was so little. It's it's just like weird, but I think it's just kind of me reminiscing. That's why that first scene is probably my favorite. <laughs> well, thank you. Let's move over to Mick. Oh, gosh. Um, similarly, I, I want to say like my first day of recording, I got to record the scene where, uh, spoiler alert, Heimerdinger comes to uh, to Jace in in the whole, his holding cell. And there was just such a depth to his response to all the events that had happened that got Jace put there. It was very. Um, I remember approaching it thinking, "Okay, this is this is Dumbledore, but not a but not a wizard. He's a scientist, and that means he has the perspective of age. It means that he is always teaching, even when." he is comforting a you know a student who's who's in prison uh and and that first day of recording i got to not only do that scene but we we started to tackle um the scene in jace's trial where where heimerdinger says no no arcane magic no hex none of this magic stuff because i've seen what it's done and and you know i it's like JB said, like, if you can get in touch with, with your own pain, that vulnerability brings, brings something to it. And, and that was a stretch for me because I, I haven't witnessed a Holocaust personally. I haven't witnessed a cataclysm personally, but I have had things fall apart and I have, uh, you know, personally wanted to put warning flags and stakes in the ground in my life and saying, I'm not going there again because that's no good. Um, and that was really powerful. I think, I think the team, um, not only the writers, but, but I got to work with David Lyerly as a voice director in that session. And he just took the time that's to echo what, what Tok said, there was just time and space to get into those moments. And it was profound. 
as an actor, you don't always get that, especially if you're doing cartoons. Uh, this is this is not a cartoon. It's an animated drama. It's an animated series, and it's beautiful. That's so well put. Let's move over to uh, Jason. I every scene in this show is well written. And it's, it's a challenge to meet that material with authenticity and to really, you know, you want to hit a home run because you know everybody else is up there swinging the bat really, really hard. And, you know, <laughs> the monologue, do you ever wonder what it's like to drown? To me, that it's so much a part of who Silco is and it was such a joy to do it. It was actually what they used to audition the role. And every time that we would start a session, I would do the monologue at the beginning, every single episode. When I went in to record, I would just set the stage using that monologue just to get me in the character's headspace and the vocal mm. space. And, and everybody in the room, like it, it let you know what the stakes are that Silco is bringing to this material. And so, I, I mean, it's hard to beat that the monologue from episode three. Well, thank you. And now over to Josh Keaton. Uh, I would say probably the first line as Solo. Uh, and I brought you ginkgo nuts because <laughs> it immediately establishes him as like this really slimy social climber um, who is oddly into health. And I really want to know what ginkgo nuts are. So. I think they do that you can get an ointment for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Talk it's to your doctor. A, it's an ancient prescription, you know. If you look if you look as good as Josh Keaton for more than 24 hours, call your physician. Right. It's so true. My condition and, is called ginkgo nuts. And finally, <laughs> back to back to JB. What was your favorite scene to work on? I, we, I already answered this question. Oh, you did? Okay. Well, did we oh, get yeah, no, did it? Okay. We want you to answer it twice. You're so no. good. No. <laughs> uh, so, same, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Haley and I are going to start alternating uh, between more specialized questions for each of you. But real quick, we got two super chats from Jantmore and Devoxim, just saying, just saying that they're happy to see all of you guys here. No questions. Just sharing their love with you guys. Uh, so now over to Haley with the first question. Yeah. So bringing it back to Mia. Um, since we, we, you were going to mention that one scene, you know, episode three, but you know, we had a special question for that. So let me just bring it up there. So yep. powder had a very emotional scene at the end of episode three, when she and Vi had their argument, several, several fans have been asking if there was anything particular about that scene that you did differently, you know, what was your mindset and what was the process like for recording that scene? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. So. I think I only recorded that scene um, probably two times, and I think they ended up using the first take. Yeah, um, mm, it was. Yeah. This is part of the legend. I'm just going to add. I'm just very quickly. I'm just going to slip in here because okay. yeah, I did do a it. session shortly afterwards to react to that scene, and they were still weeks later blown away because she. They just said so. It kind of goes here, and she went gotcha, and. <laughs> And literally just just put everyone into pieces. So mm -hmm. that's all I'll say. It was. I think it was. I, I, you might have done one and a half takes, but it wasn't more than two. And I know the first one just everyone just went um, good. Well, yeah. um, I think I think that's lunch. Um, yeah, that I'm pretty sure yeah, that's exactly way. what happened. They, they, were, they were affected. They were affected later by it because they played it for me because I walk up and I hug you and they're like, we want to play what, what Mia did. They, everyone in the room, when they played it again, they were like not ready for we're anything. All yeah, they did that with they, me too. They were, they were done. Yeah, It was so brilliant. You wrecked us. Just that wrecked us with, really a, with a wreck and roll. That genuinely <laughs> means so, so much because that scene specifically was really hard to get into that mindset. Um, at the time, I was going through some hard teenage stuff, but also just person stuff. And, you know, I've, again, never gone through anything like that. But um, I remember I was told to take as much time as I needed and to 
take that time to get into that mind space and um, collect myself if I needed to. I was recording it by myself. I didn't have Haley with me. Um, I didn't really have anything to react off of. So getting myself into that place of just despair and hopelessness and, you know, grasping for anything I can hold on to, um, it was hard, but I am so thrilled with the reaction and the support from everyone about that scene. Um, I did the best work I, I think I could have done. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. And I mean, and, and, and afterwards I had to take, I had to take a, some, some time just to collect myself because yeah, I sure. was, well, duh, but like, <laughs> I was, I was like, didn't recover probably like a week. I was just yeah, in no. my head. I was just in a but state. It speaks to, it also speaks to just how, um, you know, a, a lot of us have carried these these careers for years and worked on all this different stuff. It, it's harder to go to places like that when you've got all this encumbrance. And and it often, often a young actor who is just raw and open and going through God knows what. I wouldn't go through my teenage years for all the tea in China, and <laughs> I like tea. Um, but for for it for for that just raw openness to happen, I think that's what blew everyone away. And it, and it was just a kind of. I mean, I know it was painful, but it was just a kind of marriage of circumstances. I think that just went kaboom, yeah, and, and you yeah. you picked it up and took it, and you were and they, and they they were literally like, <laughs> they were like, I gotta tell you, this chick's putting you on a shame. This this <laughs> this chick can act. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Can act. Like, you want to hear the yeah. warning? You want to hear the warning I got before that scene? Oh my God, yeah, you, need to up, you need to up your game, boys. The warning. The warning was. You better There's be good. There's no way. Yeah. You better be good. <laughs> because yeah. like, I, I talk after yeah. you and they're like, oh no, they were like, she brought this. So, you know, it's on you now. Because you 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 put the ball in my lap in the rest of the scene. And I, and they, they were like, no pressure, man, but you better be good. And you delivered. Every single one of you. Yeah. I mean, absolutely mind blowing, but. I definitely, for like the week afterward, I was just in a state of like, I was just so like discombobulated and like felt weird because again, I, everyone is always going through something, you know, mm -hmm. and every single thing that I had put into that scene was something that was going on in my head. And I just kind of had to put them all together and let it all out. And honestly, it was really therapeutic. It was really, um good to get it all out into the open and i'm proud of myself <laughs> well you should the scene resonated so like we uh you know we do surveying for some of these questions here and on reddit twitter discord youtube every like we this was a, the most asked question we had was just what was your process for this scene so um deep depression <laughs> deep so many, so many depression. times when i answer that question it's like oh my life was falling apart yeah, no, it was like, so everything was in shambles. Um, things are going well. Things are going swimmingly. Yeah. 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 But thank you for that question. Um, so I just been to Disneyland and... Um... <laughs> well, thank you for answering. Sorry for the sirens in the background. I live in Hollywood. It's all the time. Uh, this yes. next question is for J.B. Blanc. You not only voice Vander in the Arcane TV series, but as you mentioned earlier, you also voice another character, Brom, in the League of Legends games. What is your process behind building and distinguishing between these two characters? Oh, my God. They're so different. <laughs> That was, a, you know, every character is an individual. Um, Brom, Brom is, you know, I think it's fair to say that, you know, in League of Legends, you don't get to go as deep into character as you would like to. And something like Arcane is such a different project. You know, there's so much depth and scope and many more lines to work with, many more uh, opportunities, many more interactions with other actors, which you don't really do in League. You kind of come in and you do your hero lines. Recently, we've had The Ruined King, which was an animated series, and that felt more like that the, the, the bringing Brom into an animated series made me have to explore that character a little deeper. Um, but he's, you know, he's, but they're both guys with big hearts. Brom's just much more upfront about it and, and more sort of emotionally childlike. Um, whereas Vander, I think, you know, is very emotionally mature. He's, he's, uh, he's seen it all, done it all. Um, 
made some difficult choices, is in the process of making some difficult choices. Um, but both fundamentally good people, which, I mean, I think that's the challenge because I'm so inherently evil myself. And so trying it's to be good yeah. and nice, you know, is hard. Um, yeah, no, they're, they're radically different processes. And, and you know, my work on Brom started, God knows, 10 years ago, but more. Um, he's been around for a, for a long time. I, I, I love the fact that they're both... They're both incredibly big-hearted individuals, just in completely different ways. So they're 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 radically different characters in in radically different circumstances. So it's easier to draw between them. Mm. Thanks, Greg. With the next question. Yeah. So for Jason, uh, when you record for Silco, did you think about whether or not the character was seeing Powder as a daughter or someone to manipulate? Uh, what was your thought process for your scenes with her? Well, I would say Silco's motivation is always the same until pretty late in the game that Silco wants the nation of Zon and will go through any means necessary, you know. Power is given to those who would do anything to achieve it, you know. And so that being said, Powders and, and Jinx, they're not his enemy. Right, there's someone that he is touched by. You can see that in the first moment in the alley scene where he decides to hold her. You, you see that in his eyes that, I mean, this is just another broken piece of this world and it's a shame and it could be so much more, you know, that the lanes and the undercity could be so much more. So. I, I don't, I think a lot of people see that he's manipulating, you know, Jinx sees it through that lens, but I never saw it that way. I always saw it that he just wants the, the best for the lanes and is willing to risk everything to achieve it. He's willing to, you know, they had a dream, him and Vander had a dream and it's it maybe dirty and messy to get there, but in the end it's, it's for prosperity, it's for equality. It's, and, and Jinx is the same thing, wants the best for her. Even though there may, it may be messy, it may, other people may look on it and make it, judgments on it. In the end, he really wants what's best for her and that is for her to be incredibly powerful and use her skills at creating gadgets and be useful. And of course he changes as a person into more of a father figure than he probably ever would have thought. And he's sitting at the foot of Vander's statue and says, is there anything so undoing as a daughter? There's, there's no one there to talk to. There's no one there to manipulate. There's no, he's not saying that for anyone. He's saying that to his best friend. So he sees Jinx as a daughter. Wow, well, thank you for that answer. Uh, yeah. We're gonna move over to Josh Keaton next. You already voiced quite a few characters in the show. What got you into those multiple roles? Which one was your favorite? And should we expect even more characters from you in the next season? Well, I can't comment on next season, obviously. Um, with um... There's another season? <laughs> yes. That's crazy. But nobody tells me these things. That's crazy, dog. <laughs> it's almost like I died, it's yeah. weird. Um, I mean, they, they announced that, right? Or I didn't just like make a big faux pas. I think they just, me they I'm just messing with you. <laughs> um, basically, um, some of them were just kind of thrown at me. I mean, like Gorgeous Man has like two, he says like two things. So mm -hmm. it was, it, that was just like, okay, you're doing this. And, but and God, does like, he right. say them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, does. <laughs> he does. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of the first character, the first character, I, I don't, I don't even really remember the process because, because we we did it like six years ago, um, we, and the first character was Deckard, and and that was before Solo was even a thing. I don't even think that Solo was even in the first iteration of the script. It was just Deckard, and so, um, you know, I, I, uh, I, that that was just kind of the voice that came out when when they kind of described him. And, uh, and and we stuck with that. So there really wasn't a whole lot of process. Um, a, a lot of it was just kind of reading, reading the script and kind of figuring out his motivations, how he, he really wants to, he, wa yeah, he wants to, he wants to prove to his friends that he's like, he's like the tough guy on the block. He wants to have like some ownership of, of everything and, and really kind of make a name for himself. But at the same time, he's, you know, he, he's, he's not really all that brave when it comes down to it. 
Um, and and so that kind of also helps figure into to why he does what he does and, and eventually goes through with it, even though he didn't have a little lot of choice with uh, when he took the shimmer. But um, with Solo, it was literally just seeing a picture of the guy. They actually showed me some, you know, concept drawing of Solo. And I was like, okay, this this is this is what I hear for him. And and at first it was almost like a meme. It was almost kind of ridiculous, but it worked. And uh and and yeah, so I mean, there, there there really wasn't a whole lot of process, to be honest. It was more like for gorgeous man. I'm like, you know, what's the most gorgeous voice I could think of? Well, it's uh, it's deep and resonant, and and, uh, uh, very <laughs> and then um, and then for for solo, it was just I, I saw his picture and I was like, eh, that this this is what he sounds like. Um, it, was, it was really just kind of spur of the moment stuff for those. You're just oh, too you. damn good at your job. <laughs> oh, stop. Pretty much. <laughs> uh, Haley with the next question. Yeah, this one's for Tox. Um, so your character, Mel, has developed something of a relationship with Jace, but one um, that she's somewhat using to put uh, the change she wants to see out there in the world. Do you imagine her feelings for Jace are sincere, or do you have a different mindset when approaching these scenes? And also, if you can, can you tell us how your character feels about Jace's lab partner, Victor, as well? Um, the way that I see it is that she actually has genuine feelings for him and she sees it more as a collaboration than anything else. Um, I don't think it's let me find somebody to use for this. I think it's let me find somebody to work with on this. Mm. Um, because I, I think she's smart enough to know that if you use people, they'll end up turning on you. But if you collaborate with people uh, and you have a relationship with them, not the relationship that they end up having, but if you have a relationship with them, then you can get better work out of it. I think she's very sincere about the work she wants to do. and She's trying to find the best person for that job, but not in a way to use them, in a way to work with them, like I said. Um, and I think that she probably sees victor the same way i think it's um i don't i don't think it's as sinister as it might come off i think she really it's like anyone else trying to staff their company basically um just trying to find the best people for the job um yeah sorry i think when she first catches <laughs> them trying to break into the lab she makes it clear that that what they're up to fascinates her she's got yes. a, genuine, a very genuine interest in it yeah and he's and he's Really hot. Well, there's that. That doesn't. That really, doesn't hurt. Really hot. Doesn't yeah, hurt. Doesn't hurt. I mean, like I'm. The man can well, swing you know. a hammer. Yes. <laughs> and did you see how symmetrical his face is? <laughs> All right. We are now over to Mick. Your character is known for being long living and having centuries of experience over the people he works with. You kind of dived into a little bit of this earlier. What is your approach to playing a character who is that biggest scope on life? I just pretend I'm the smartest guy in the room, uh, which is usually pretend. true. No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, it was that actually, it's a really good question because, um, I mean, Hammerdinger, he says out loud in, in the actual script that he, he's the only one burdened with the burden of time of pers the perspective of time. And, um, you know, most so often acting for us is is drawing on our life experiences and and infusing these characters moments with the emotional truth that comes from inside of us from what we've lived through and i haven't lived through 300 years uh that i know of and um and and so that took that just takes i guess imagination uh is is the best word for it i really just tried to imagine what it would be like to um, to be the person in the room who had been at the job the longest and um, at the cause the longest um, and, and working with, with people towards a goal that, that was fresh for, for all of them, but for me had history. And that, that proved to be really, um, really important. Uh, what I will say too is that um, I also tried to get inside of because I hadn't uh, experienced any kind of massive tragedy like that, at least personally. I tried to get into the mindset of what it would be like to to be a Holocaust survivor because what happened with magic in Heimerdinger's life in the Yordle villages was akin to the great 
destruction and evil that was the the holocaust and i thought if if he's anybody right now he's he's somebody with a number tattooed on his arm who's who's standing in a in a city council or is standing in a in a governing body saying uh, i'm going to make sure this never happens again i'm going to make sure that that no one else has to suffer this and uh, and again, that's not from personal experience, but knowing the stories that I do know from that and 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 being exposed to what I have about that Holocaust, um, it really, I, I feel like it served me well to to think in terms of, you know, here's a life, here's a life experience that no one else in this room has uh, and, a, and a way of seeing how bad things can get that everyone else at this table um, is blinded to and and doesn't even have a, a a sense of. So I think that's that's really how I was able to kind of get that long livedness, if it were, uh, in in to the professor. Um, that's that was the process that I went through. And surely letting yourself allow the moustache to do a lot of the work for you. Well, of course. I mean, it's a magnificent moustache. It really is. I, I envy it every day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I used to wear a goatee, and now, like after playing Heimerdinger, I'm like, my goatee is so pathetic. I'm just gonna go clean shave it because <laughs> I can't great, compete. It's a great answer, Mick. You're a star. Awesome. We're gonna jump into more general questions now, but real quick, we're gonna take one from one of our super chats from Troy Allen. He wants to first say you're all amazing and an inspiration for him in voice acting. Acting, and second, what your favorite line is, whether it was yours or someone else's. Why don't we start with Tokes? Wait, <laughs> that was a lot. Sorry. What was your favorite line, whether it was yours or someone else's? Oh, um, Mel has a line um, where she talks about, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I have a toddler, so I don't have much of a brain because I don't sleep ever. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. And I don't no, have a toddler, I'm just taking like... midterms. <laughs> yeah, no, Mia, me too. Mia, when That's you right sleep, right. you'll, you'll be wishing you were in midterms again. Oh, really? <laughs> But um, I wish I could go back to that that type of not sleeping. That would be great. Um, but but um, yeah, she has a line. Um, Mel has a line about how um, even when life gets hard um, and you have to deal with it, one of the the bright moments in that is that you don't have to deal with it alone. Um, I wish I could remember the exact line, but that's a line that I really. Um, that I really like because it's something that I had to learn as a, as a human being is that sometimes when things are getting really bad, you really think that you're the only person dealing with it. You know, it's like, you know, it's there is always, always, even when it feels like there isn't, there is always someone that you can reach out to to help you along the journey. And I think that that's just an important thing for everybody to realize, even if it's not someone you know, you know, even if it's someone you just admire, even if you have to call a helpline, even if it's like, you, you know, someone you haven't spoken to in a while, but they they inspire you or have supported you in the past or whatever, if you're not looking at the situation right, you just try to reevaluate it and, and see who, who can walk along the path with you so that you don't have to feel as alone. Um, which I think also it, it's it's sort of a reflection of all the characters in this um, show as well, because they all have, as far as I can tell, they all have some sort of childhood trauma that's like they're carrying along with them. And they're all desperately trying to find that one person who's going to, to walk that journey with them. Wow. That was an amazing answer. Thank you so much. Uh, wow. Let's move over to JB with what his favorite line was. Oh, there's so many. I mean, Silco's got some of the best lines in this thing. It's they're really remarkable. Yeah. Um, the the stuff about being, you know, the 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 base violence necessary for change. It's a title. I mean, of one of the episodes. It's so good. Um, but there's a there's a bit where Vander goes into, you know. When people look up to you, you don't get to be selfish. Something along those lines. Um, you say, like you say, run, they run. You say, swim, they dive in. You say, light a fire, they they show up with oil. 
Um, but whatever happens, it's on you, your responsibility. That sort of that sort of weight of responsibility of being a leader, I think, is is telling. And uh, and then just the simpler stuff of like, you know, you've got a you've got a great heart. Don't ever lose that. The stuff that he wants, the wisdom he wants to pass on to to that very special relationship that he has with Vi, I think, is is just really cleverly observed and and simple and beautiful and direct. So that's my two penneth. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. And now over to Mick. Uh, gosh, I love Heimerdinger because he's so quotable. Uh, I think my favorite little moment of his is uh, people love a grand reveal, uh, which is just such a great little moment where, you know, he's throwing open the doors and we get to see progress day. Um, but honestly, my one of my favorite lines in the whole series is Vander's, and that is, uh, don't mess with a guy who buys the drinks, or who makes the drinks. Uh, who pours the drinks, that's what it is. Don't mess with a guy who pours the drinks. Little piece of advice. Um, it's so good. It's just so insightful, and it says so much in so few <laughs> words. Again, it's just a testament to Christian and Alex, uh, our writers, Alex E. Christian Link. 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 They just they poured themselves into this, and and they use an economy of words at times, and they use a a a lot of words at times, but they just they just created some great moments. Thank you. And now over to Josh. Um, my favorite line was actually the one that JB said, um, that, that seriously, that was, that was one of the things that, that really stuck out to me. When people look up to you, you don't get to be selfish. That that's exactly the line that, that, uh, that it was. And, um, that, that just really rung out to me because, you know, I'm a dad, I have a, a six and an eight year old and, uh, and, and I grew up most of my life being very selfish. I was the only boy. I was, you know, my, my, my sister sort of low key hated me at times because I, I was treated differently because I was the only boy. And I ended up, you know, I was, I was a selfish kid and um, having kids really changed that in me. And, and so, and, and Vander just, th there was so much that I, that I saw in his character arc and, and uh, I don't, I don't want to say parallels in my own life, but in terms of just, how you have to how you have to think as as a dad when somebody when you're completely responsible for the life of somebody, um, it, uh, it that just that that rung out to me and and made made me just love love Vander, um, but that it, it's a it's a line that 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 made me oddly well I wouldn't even say oddly emotional it made me, it made me emotional and and it makes a whole lot of sense and um, that's that's what I believe and and it. it represented a big change in in myself as a person and so that that just that stuck out to me that's that's one of my favorite lines in the show i was getting asked a lot at the premiere like well, how did you how did you kind of get into this character i was just like i'm a dad it was really simple i'm a dad and that's it that'll kill you every time <laughs> yeah let's move yeah. over on to jason now with his favorite line well it's going to seem a bit uh, trite, I imagine, because it's a lot of people were touched by this line. But what what went into it was the idea that, you know, we're all broken and we all have things that we wish were different about us. And we all have things we hate about our body or the way our mind works or our memory. And we're forgetful or we, we, you know, or cling too much to the past or, you know, we have mental illness and you know, body dysphoria, whatever is wrong in our mind with us. The idea that there's someone out there, whether it's your mother or your father, the person who's become your mentor, the person, the sister you get to choose, whatever, looks at you and says, don't cry, you're perfect. There's something about that that hit home with so many humans who've watched this in whatever language they get to take it in that that crushes you and humbles you and makes you feel that all of the rest of the window dressing that we put on our lives is mostly baloney mm -hmm. and if you have someone who sees you as your authentic self and accepts you for that 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 you can do anything in this world that you'll be okay and that to me is why i love the line so much too relatable, gonna cry. Mia, your favorite line. The chat went wild oh. when you said that, by the way. <laughs> Jesus, Jason. Why? I, 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 I stole the show. 
And I love all of you, so. <laughs> no, because that was the line that I was going to say. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I 100% agree with every everything all of you have said, but especially Jason, that line. Um, again, I'm in high school. I'm really young. Um, and it's hard to find people who want to, to be in your life solely for the purpose of being in your life, not because they have ulterior motives or because they want something from you or, you know, anything like that. But when you finally find someone that loves you for you and wants to be in your life just to be in your life, I don't think there's any better feeling. Um, but that line, I think it hit home not only with me, but with so many other people is because we all just want someone to love us for who we are. We all just want someone to be there for us unconditionally. And I don't know. I mean, there's so many lines in the show that when I heard for the first time or read, I was just like, they really, I don't know. Who decided it would be okay to put this in my life right now? <laughs> but, yeah. Damn them all. Literally. Literally. But, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. You guys if are I say anything cry. more, I'm just going to start, like, sobbing again. So This has definitely been our most emotional live stream so far. Um, I'm going to move <laughs> over to Haley with the next question. But real quick, I just want to say thank you to a lot of our super chats from Just Aaron, Blondzilla, Mimi, Allison, Just Aaron again, Alexis, Troy, Marissa Skelton. You're all great. I can't ask all these questions. A lot of them are just asking for spoilers from season two. We can't do that. Uh, but thank you for the super chats nonetheless. And now over to Haley with her next question. Yeah. There's a season two? Uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, uh, which character do you relate to the most, and which character do you feel is the most different from you? It can you can say your own character if you want. Um, yeah. So let's start with Josh. Oh, I'm starting. Um, <coughs> some guy. <coughs> wow. Um, <laughs> yes, the gorgeous man. Um, Beauty before age, one. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um. Honestly, I would, I would probably, I would probably say Vander, um, in terms of, and again, it's, it's just, it's being a dad. It's, it's, it's realizing that you have to put yourself second, but still doing whatever, whatever it takes to, to protect, to protect your kids. Um, I, I, I never saw myself being that kind of a person and, and that's, that's what I have become. Um, and, and also like, I guess, I mean, you, you really wouldn't know it from, from this live chat, but the older I get, the less I say. And, and I noticed that Vander, he, he speaks, everything that he says is, is what's necessary. And I don't know. It's just, I, I'm, I'm, this is, this is why I don't speak because I can never think of the right thing to say anymore. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would definitely say Vander there, there's, there's just a, a quiet, like a, a stoicism to him that, that I really admire. Um, just the fact that he, he always is, is, is putting himself second and, and, uh, and really trying to, to protect, uh, those that he loves. And, and that's, that's what I, that's what I try to be. So definitely Vander. Mm -hmm. So speaking of Vander, let's go to JB. One more answer, Vander. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Obvious reasons. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I agree with 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 Josh. His economy of communication is because he has he listens and he considers the best possible answer, and I think that's what smart people do. And I wish I was smarter. Um, but uh, yeah, it's I find him incredibly admirable, and I don't feel like he sold anyone out. I just don't. I think he did what he felt was right to protect those kids. And uh, I'd go to me grave thinking that by God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you love to see it. Oh, and you hate oh, to see no. it go. Cool. What about you, Mia? Man. Uh, I think, you know, this is probably going to be really like cliche and dumb, but both Powder and Jinx. 
I think there's a mixture of both of them in me. Um, you know, it, it's so hard to explain. Like, I see a lot of myself in powder, wanting to do everything right, and wanting to be um, loved and respected. And, you know, it's the, it's the same base um, wants for Jinx as well. You know, she wants to be loved and respected and cared about and cared for. And I think there's definitely a mixture of the two. Also, um, Jinx is just really, really cool. So, like, but, like, okay, anyway, yeah. <laughs> I just think uh, there's a mixture of the two of them in me. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, and on to Mick. Oh, uh, gosh. Wow, this is going to sound so weird, uh, but I actually really identify with Deckard. Um, he's the guy who's fighting for his piece of the pie and isn't always making the right choices. And I can see that in, in my history. I can see that that guy who just wants to, who just wants to prove he's, he belongs at the dance and just doing what he, what he was taught to do in order to show that. And, and that, that, hit, that hits home for me. Um, <laughs> I would love to say that I identify with Vander. I think Vander's the man I want to be. And that, um, and, and even to a certain degree, Silco is that man as well, because even underneath all of his tactics, even underneath all of his ruthless uh, choices um, and his means to get to his end, there, there is a heart in, in getting to his end. And he does see that Jinx powder is perfect. And he does want something beyond just his Machiavellian scheme. Um, so I would say th those would be the guys I'd like to say, yeah, I really resonate with. Uh, they're the ones who speak to me the most. But if I'm honest, which I don't know why I'm being honest on a live stream in front of <laughs> thousands of people, I would say, would yeah, I've, I can see myself having been Deckard a lot in uh, both my career and my, my actual relational, you know, my relational life. Wow. Awesome. Word. That's really cool. <laughs> It's time to let the monster out, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I was informed, uh, Jason, that you have a live stream. You're supposed to be at a live stream now, so well, no, wanna... I, was, I was an idiot. I thought, yeah, well, I'll do my signing after this. Jason, you're so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> I Who's you, the dumbest um... character in Arcane? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm that person. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever that person is. Correct. Uh, I'm the, the the enforcer that gets blown up after looking at Jinx's, you know, art on Progress Day. Hey, yeah. look at that! It's like, uh, <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess if I'm next, um, I'll go. Am I next? Uh, yeah, Alex is like, oh, if you want to hop off after answering this, you could. Oh, um, okay. Um, well, I have a lot in common with Soko, but not in the way that probably most people would think. Uh, <laughs> sort of being hopelessly affected for the better by someone else, mm. right? Because if you, if you look at who Silco is by the end of the story, I mean, the, the path that he chose was certainly not going to be one where he ends up dying at a table because he, you know, didn't see it coming. This is the guy who has placed four steps ahead in chess. But there he is, hopelessly, you know, devoted to another human being's well-being so much that he would never have given Jinx to them and would have brought about the nation of Zahn through a bunch of chess plays rather than giving Jace what he wanted, you know, and, and even risking that thing that he spent his life devoted to. And it, it's that you don't get to choose, you know, who affects you the way that they do sometimes for the better. And you stand there in awe of their capacity to do so for you. And so that for me is, what I have in common with him. Mm. Mm. Cool. Uh, yeah, if you want to stay, you could, but otherwise. I'm going to piss right off. Okay. Well, thank you for Bye, Jason. Today. Love you. Oh, thank okay. you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, I, I just feel bad because there's probably people waiting. Oh, yeah. So. I got a lot of fans. Your thank you. Up and get out of here. That's thank right. You so Go much, on. you guys. Uh, Peace bye. and love. Thanks, Jason. Love you. For those who don't know, Jason is off to do a signing of some autograph prints. You can get your own by using the Streamly link in the description down below. And I don't think, did Tox answer this question yet? 
No, that's what I was going to get third cool. last. Just yeah. sure. um, I'll start with who I think I'm opposite from. That's Caitlin. <laughs> she seems <laughs> to have had a really nice, comfy life. That would have been nice. Um, uh, and actually, the, the character that I actually, um, I wish I related to Mel. She's got it so together. She's got so many people she can pay to help her to do things. That would be nice. Um, but it's actually powder. I, you know, I grew up in a third world country and mm -hmm. I saw a lot of terrible things that I wish I hadn't seen. And I experienced a lot of terrible things that I wish I hadn't seen. Um, that really changed, it, it, it sort of didn't allow me to have a childhood. And it sort of introduced me to the evil that men can do at far too early an age. You mm -hmm. know, I, I grew up in a military government. Um, I lived through several military coups. Um, there's a, an enormous amount of poverty in Nigeria where I'm from, and it results in people having to do what they have to do simply to survive and provide for their families. And um, I think when you grow up like that, it sort of, you know, jinx is no surprise to me. <laughs> That's what you get when you grow up like that. You get someone who's really struggling to figure things out and struggling to stay calm and be what they really want to be, but not being able to, you know, it, it um, uh, which definitely I relate to insofar as like mostly my teenage years and my twenties, you know, um, really just struggling insofar as the trauma that someone experiences from when they're very little, you know, not, not, um, which is one of the reasons why I think a lot of people really enjoy or maybe relate to this show is I think mm. that there are a lot of people around the world who've had one kind of trauma or another in their childhood and um, so many of these characters have experienced that and I think that when um, I, the, the job they did with this show and the way that they fleshed out these characters and the layers that they put into these characters it's just so incredibly genuine and real and I think that that's what allows people to relate to it and I mean you know me did such a great job with powder and I I think I cried almost every single time she was on screen because it's just such a great character so it would be powder thank you yeah thank you for the answer did you also want to tell us which one you relate to the most or or did Powder is who I relate to the most. Caitlin's who right. I relate to the least. Got it. Got it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to a bit more of a positive question this time. Uh, what has been the uh, most positive experience you've had with the fandom? We got into this a little bit earlier, uh, but you know, what else you got for us? Why don't we start with Mia again? Okay. Dude, the TikTok community is crazy. <laughs> they are so cool. Like, I was just saying that... Um, me and Jason have been duetting each other's TikToks. Um, and they're so funny and kind and um, supportive. Um, the, 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 the cosplayers and the fan artists are incredible. Incredible. I mean, the most, cre like they are creative geniuses mm. in every way, shape and form. Um, yeah, no, that is definitely the most positive experience I've had. Every experience I've had in this um, fan base has been wonderful. And they are all so wonderful, and I love them. <laughs> I, I literally could just keep talking about them forever because they're just, like, the best. But <laughs> Well, let's give uh, the others a chance to do the same. How about you, Josh? I'm sorry. What was the question again? I, I totally positive experience that. with fandom. Positive experience with fans. Okay, so we had a really amazing, um, a really amazing premiere party um, where they basically kind of recreated uh, the Undercity and all of that, and uh, and a lot of fans were invited to join and and just we actually got a chance to kind of role play where they actually had somebody that was dressed up as Deckard and, and all these other characters from Zon, and you actually had to go and interact with people and and go and like steal things from, from uh, you know, this one thing and bring them back to, or steal something from Silco's office and do all of that. So That's just cool. getting able to, it, it was incredible. It was incredible, but just getting, it, being able to actually just role play parts of the show 
with fans of the show and and in this this whole environment was was uh, an experience that i've never had before and and it, it was it was really it was really cool and and like again because since it was just my voice most of the people that i was there with role playing had no idea who i was had no idea with my involvement in the show so we were all just kind of there as equals in this uh under city just kind of doing the thing and and uh it, it was kind of like something out of a dream and and yeah that that was amazing um and and again you know just seeing the positive reaction of everybody online has also been been really incredible thank you now over to tox uh yeah secret cinemas under city nights for sure um i don't know how many of the fans got to experience it but um i'm sure they would agree also <laughs> having having lived through the last two years uh, with a very small child is, you know, I, I cannot go anywhere. You know, I, I can't, my kid cannot get sick. So the only places I go are on set. I go on set because we're all vaccinated. We're all, um, we're all tested every day or even before vaccines, you know, we were all tested every day. Um, that's what, that's the only place I go. I literally don't go anywhere else. So the first time I really went out was the premiere. And the second time I really went out was Under City Nights. And I had the time of my life. I felt like, like I literally had not been anywhere, not dressed up. I'd not, you know, um, and then to go and hang out with members of the cast and um I remember you were a bit Shorey like a deer in headlights. <laughs> you, 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 could, you, could, you could barely believe that you were out of the house. I seriously, I was like, what "What's going is on? Happening? This is crazy." <laughs> um, I'm, I, I, honestly, it was, it was fantastic, and um. You know, meeting Shoreg Dashalu was a highlight for me. And then just doing, yeah, doing the night, like you said, Josh, and and, and watching Jason. Jason kept sneaking up behind people, <laughs> doing Silco's voice in their ear and like freaking them out. It was amazing. It was great. Um, that was a great, yeah, that was a great night. And to watch the fans, just watch them have such an amazing time with it was, I mean, it, it, it was very emotional for me. And there was, you know, there was lots of, you know, there was music and there was all sorts of stuff going on and everyone was just in it, you know, and everyone dressed for it and everyone was positive and was really excited to be there. So that was probably my favorite. Yeah. It was oh, like a concert know. where you experienced the show on a whole different level where, where so it, it just, you experience it spiritually. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now over to Nick. Oh, gosh. Um <clears throat> Man, I, I did not get the opportunity to go to the Undercity Nights, though I was invited, and I, now I regret not going. Um, mm -hmm. Desperately. Uh, I will say that in terms of my personal interaction, some of the best um, interaction that I've had has, has been from commissioning pieces of, uh, of art for Heimerdinger and just the response that people are having to... Um, you know, to the artist's representations of of this character people love this yordle they just love him and um and to be able to you know associate my name with as mia said about the tiktok community like this level of creativity this level of skill um in terms of art artistic rendering whether that is in a cosplay or that's in a um a piece of art you know that is digitally made or 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 painted like it's just incredible. It's incredible to be able to to say, wow, this guy means so much to so many people. And mm -hmm. um, and I get to be a small part of that. Oh. You're muted. Sorry, again. I'm dumb. Uh, thank you so much for your answer, Mick. Over to JB. What was your positive experience with the fandom, if any? Uh, many positive experiences. But I think um, one of the shockers has been that I had no idea that there were so many definitions of the word daddy. Oh, <laughs> oh Josh can tell you about that. Um, <laughs> particularly, Dude, apparently, Jesus among the gay God. community who have been very forthcoming in their um, praise of Vander's attributes <laughs> and <laughs> attitudes and Dude. general stance in society. Uh, I've been introduced to a term uh, that I did not was not previously aware of, uh, which was the word "dilf," um, no. which I will leave to your imagination. Um, so yes, there have been many different um, 
experiences oh. involved in. And it's quite funny because, you know, my, my character in, in Apex Legends is called the Guest Daddy. Um, oh. So, so, oh, no. so uh, the daddy seems to be a theme. And I, I welcome it with open arms, but just the arms. <laughs> just the arms. Jason's TikTok. <laughs> If you go through those comments, dog, you don't want to. But if you do, it's a family show. Uh -huh. <laughs> it? it was a family show. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I'm going to pass the baton over to Haley for the next question. Just real quick, I want to thank our super chats. Another one from Allison Cornell. She just wants to say good luck to Mia on your midterms that you'll slay. Ah, thank uh, you, and then we have another. And then Blondzilla gave us a question for Tox, which is, what was the most challenging scene for you to voice in season one? Oh, the fight with Mel's mom. Mm. That was mm. that was rough. <laughs> that was a rough one. That was, um, I, I, um, yeah, they, uh, they, they really. We did it, and I was doing it very much in the um, very proper like Mel way and they were like yeah yeah no no you're gonna have to get a little bit more raw for that and I was like do I and they were like yeah and I was like oh no um and so I did and um it was raw it was I mean it was great it felt great to 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 do it in so far as like knowing I was where I needed to be with it but it was very emotional and not easy <laughs> Now over to Haley with the next question. I'd also love another super chat that we got. Uh, uh, Mick, what do you th what are your thoughts on Heimerdinger and Echo together? I, I loved it. <laughs> uh, I think it is a perfect odd couple pairing. I loved the scenes at the end of Act Three where Heimer is living in the Undercity and 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 palling around with Echo. Um, I. I think that it's I I I just think it's a really good uh, yin and yang, as it were, two creative genius guys who are from completely different sides of of the tracks, as it were, both metaphorically and literally. Um, you know, you've got you've got Heimerdinger, who's very academic and very you know ivory tower, and then you've got Echo, who's who says profound things like it's not enough to give people what they what what they need to live you've you've got to uh to exist you've got to give them what they need to live and um and just the savvy that goes along with that i th i can't i i hope that that we get to see more of that so yeah this could this is kind of a silly question um and it 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 could be a character that doesn't even make sense for you but if you could play any character on the show besides the one you voice who would it be and why uh, so yeah, let's go with Mia. Silco. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> so obviously, there's no way. I just think some of his dialogue is so. Most of his dialogue, if not all, is you are so able to get really in there and do really, really, really good work with his dialogue, with all of these characters' dialogue. I mean, the writing in this show, I've said it before and I'll say it again, mind-blowing. Um, so either Silco, just because there's a lot of layers and a lot of really interesting things to play around with, or mm, Jinx. Just because it's the same thing, you know? I, I mean, I know I and powder but um jinx just because again there's so much to learn from her and so much to unpack either of those two would be really really fun i highly recommend you and jason going on tiktok and just doing a scene where you play each other's characters <gasps> 100 p oh, we should. i will yes. be texting him immediately after this thank you for that idea you're very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, Tox, how about you? Who would you uh, definitely Jinx. One hundred percent Jinx. That just seems like so much fun and such a challenge. That would. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, JB. I haven't really thought about it. Should have been thinking about it while everyone else was answering, shouldn't I? 
<laughs> we can get um, back to you then. Yeah, I don't know really. Okay, uh, I'm Josh. Very happy where I am. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard because everybody yeah. turned in such perfect performances. Um, I know it's like that, that yeah. you don't really want to like mess with it, you know. Yeah, um, you don't want to don't upset the apple cart. Yeah, like I maybe maybe Jace. I like his I like his idealism or uh, or or Victor. I, I really love his uh, his kind of introspective curiosity. Like I. I they're they're both fun characters for for different reasons and and maybe them but again like i'm i i, I they have their voices and and i i love i love how they sound and i love how they turned out and i i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to mess with it but if i had to probably one of those two mm. Mm -hmm. wonderful um, cool. uh, oh, oh, i didn't get that. <laughs> no, I um, I have to say I, I didn't want to be a copycat. I was going to try to throw out something different, but I have to say Silco. I remember when the sides came around for Silco and reading the, do you know what it's like to feel, what it feels like to drown um, so good. monologue. And and in the original audition sides, it was, it was a, you know, he was saying that to, um, to our, our, Dr. Mengele guy. Um, and, and it was, it, I just remember connecting with, with where this guy was coming from. Now, I don't think I should have played that role. I think it's perfectly cast. Uh, but man, if I could, if I could get the opportunity to, to, to chomp down on some of those, some of those words and, and, and really get in touch with, you know, the complexity of that character, it, just be a dream. Just be a fun, challenging dream. All right. We have enough time for one more question, I think. I think this is the perfect one to send us off with. Uh, this question is not asking for spoilers of the upcoming season, but rather what kind of scenes would you like to see your character, whether they're dead or alive or outgrown, what kind of scenes would you like to you know, perform in a hypothetical second season? Or onward. Oh, why don't we start with... Uh, does anyone have an answer already? Because this is a bit of a hard one. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I guess Gorgeous Man could keep on massaging and you know doing the gorgeous <laughs> thing. Um, oh, you know, what is what is Gorgeous Man's story? Why is he so gorgeous? What? Where did he <laughs> learn to massage that way? Uh, what is his ab routine? Um, I, I want to know what's all his name. Things. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> who is yes. Gorgeous Man? Yes, who is Gorgeous Man? Um, or, you know, honestly, I'd like to I'd like to know more about Solo. I'd, I'd like to know what where he came from, what uh, what his story is. Um, we we just see him as as this council member that uh, really is is kind of a brown noser and social climber, and and uh, I want I want to know about him. I like to imagine Gorgeous Man is actually his name for the record. That's <laughs> yes. me, you address him as Mr. G Man. Yes. <laughs> that is on his birthday. Before Rillington again. Place. Gorgeous Man. Jess Man. Man. Yes. Uh, why don't we go to Mia for the next one? And this is a hard one. Um, I, if anything, would want to see Powder interact more with um vander and milo and you know her family before everything happened i think that would be a really really interesting thing to explore mm -hmm. i'd watch a pretty cool series of that for sure yeah yeah no because we do get to know those characters individually but we never really get to know them as a unit so i don't know i think that would be interesting uh, let's move over to Josh. Wait, did you, no, Josh, sorry. Priorities. JV, JV now. Everything. I know, it's slap, very easy to get us order. confused because we are both incredibly handsome. Um, yes. That can happen. So try not to blame yourself, Deep Cut. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I you know, Vanda's gone. You know, that's it. It's over. So I, 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 I don't know. Uh, it's very sad for me because, you know, I'd love it to carry on, but... Uh, it's been a difficult one that you know I, it, it was such a it was such an important part of my life and for such a short period of time um so who knows who knows what the future brings but um i i mean i'd love there to be more more explorations of that of their life in zorn uh, uh, uh before all of this went down and potentially you know 
Silco and Vanda's original relationship. Mm-hmm. That'll yeah. be something. Mm-hmm. That'll be and, something. And finally, Mick. Um, I, I would love to know what what Heimerdinger's life was like pre Piltover. Like, mm-hmm. I would love to uh, play the scenes of young Heimerdinger in the Yordle village, in his quest for knowledge, in his possible participation with what happened there and what caused such uh, a devastating event. Um, Yeah, I I would love to dig in kind of prequel, like everybody's been saying, I would love to to dig into what made what made Heimerdinger the the Yordle that he is today. Um, And what was he like before he would be came so out of touch with with life on the ground um when he when he was part of part of this society that that uh that required him to be engaged uh unlike his life in piltover so i think that that would be super fun to explore and who is his barber and who is his barber and what products does he use what is his routine yeah, it's beautiful. That mustache oil has got mm-hmm. to be something. It's a beautiful thing. It is. What I'm getting is we need prequels for this prequel. Uh, and finally, yes. folks managed to jump back in. The question we're asking yeah, sorry about that. is uh, what kind of scenes you'd like to see for your character in future seasons? I want Mal in leather pants and a corset in Piltover, like in, yes. uh, in Zorn. Like, just like trying to figure out what's going on down there and interacting with Jenks and Vi and that's what I that's what I want. Let's manifest. (laughs) All right. Well thank you guys so much for coming to this live stream. Everyone in the audience and of course the amazing voice actors who joined us today. This has been the most emotional live stream I think we've ever done. So uh there's a yeah there's a group signing tomorrow with uh, you guys are doing I believe at 1 p.m. Um, on Streamly's YouTube. So everyone watching this should be check that out tomorrow. That's 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for yeah. the record. And if you want to get something signed by them, you can still purchase a print with the Streamly link that's on the screen right now and in the description down below. And I think that's a goodbye. Thank you guys for joining Thanks, us. Thank, Thank you guys. so we much for being here. You're the best. Awesome. Bye.